Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to special OAA Now football preview show, the Red Edition. I am Sammy Terramina, blogger of the Dragons Insider, blogger of Inside the OAA, and one of the hosts of Between Terramina's and Orient Neighborhood Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice and uh, hearing us on local voice and watching on YouTube and also on Orient Neighborhood Television. We got the red edition. Of course, we talked the blue two weeks ago. We talked the white last week. And this week, we have one of the toughest divisions in the state. That is the OA red. Of course, last season, we had a state champion in this division. We've had numerous state powerhouses in this, in this division. So let's look at our first team. It is the um, Clarkston Wolves. Of course, last season, they had a re, um, rebounding year for the Wolves. Of course, um, 2019 was not a good year for them. But Clarkston, they got to replace a lot especially up front when you lose two Division I caliber linemen and Rocco Spindler and Garrett Dillinger. So here's Clarkson coach Kurt Richardson at the podium. Uh, just like everybody else, we'd like to thank Coach Vernon and Rochester for hosting this today. Um, it's a special event for, I think, the best league in the state. Um, we put premier teams at all levels. Um, we're as anxious as everybody else. We're tired of the seven on sevens. We want to get to the real thing. And so we're looking forward to the season. Um, I have my four captains with me today, and they're going to introduce themselves. I'm Cole Dellinger, O-line, line, and I'm a junior. I'm Mike DePoe, I'm a senior quarterback. Ethan Clark, running back. Caleb Stallworth, senior linebacker. I wish everybody the best of luck and stay healthy. Thank you. Clarkson's a team that's got some questions this year when you look at the Wolves, obviously. Um, when you look at the Wolves, I am very concerned about their defensive line. Um, their strength should be their quarterback play with Mike DePillow back, Ethan Clark, Davis York. Um, they got some good receivers coming back as well, but in, the, in their, defense is, their defense line is solid. Their linebackers should be the strength of their defense. The secondary is a little bit of a concern when I look at Clarkson. Um, when you look at the schedule, when you look at the Wolves' schedule this year, uh, they do open up with Davison at Ann Arbor in the big house. Um, Davison last year went to the um, Division I state championship game a year ago. Um, Clarkson, of course, lost to um, arch rival Grand Blank, uh, Davison arch rival Grand Blank um, in the postseason. Um, so that'll be a really interesting matchup. I'm curious to see how um, Clarkson will do in that game against Davison. Of course, Davison did say on ABC 12 um, that um, they were um, a cool unfinished business. Of course, Davison was not forget lost to West Bloomfield last season in the state championship game. So it'll be a really interesting matchup between Davison and Clarkson, how both teams will match up at Michigan. Uh, September the 3rd, they take on the Maples of Birmingham Seaholm. Um, once again, it'll be a, I think it'll be a really interesting there in that one. Um, I just think Clarkson's got a little bit more talent there in that matchup. Um, September 10th against Stony Creek. Um, that one's going to be really interesting. Of course, the Wolves have a um, they're a team that has a. Um, I, I like where Clarkson's at. I mean, like Stony Creek, a little bit young coming in this year, um, so it'll be very interesting there. September 17th, they're at home with Southwood A and T. Um, I remember the last time Clarkson um, beat A and T. I mean, they won last year against them uh, at Southfield, and they beat them in 2019, um, the second time. Um, so Clarkson's won three to the last four against A&T. Um, September 24th, they host Oxford. Um, this will be a really interesting matchup. Um, obviously, Oxford, obviously Clarkson's had Oxford's number the last few years in the playoffs. Um, October 1st, that's going to be the game in the Swamp. I think that'll be a really interesting matchup there. Of course, um, West Bloomfield last year lost to Clarkson in overtime. So it'll be a really interesting matchup right there. October 8th, the um, Annual game with Lake Orion, of course, it's a home game for Clarkston. I just think that um, when you look at the matchup, it'll be really interesting to see how these two teams match up. Um, Clarkston won last year's game at Lake Orion, so it'll be really interesting there. October the 15th, they take on Groves. Um, that'll be a really unique matchup there. Um, and then October 22nd, the game, they don't play Utica Ford this year. Utica Ford got Clarkston out of schedule, so Clarkston picked up a team from, from Canada in the Toronto School District area. So that will be a really interesting matchup there for Clarkston. So when you look at the Wolves, I mean, there's a lot of optimism surrounding Clarkston. That I know Kurt Richardson said that um, they're going to ride Mike DePillo and Ethan Clark. 
as long as they take him. And I think that's what's going to be the case this year for Clarkson this upcoming season. Um, now let's go from Clarkson to Lake Orion. And I think this is a team that um, they, I've got some concerns when I look at the Dragons, obviously. I mean, last season they took a step back. Um, I mean, like, they kind of struggled. They struggled, but um, there is some optimism surrounding Lake Orion this year. So here's Lake Orion coach John Blackstock. Thank you. My name is uh, John Blackstock. This will be my 24th year overall at Lake Orion High School, fifth as head coach. Uh, like everyone else, I'd like to thank Coach Vernon and the Rochester Schools for holding this event to showcase, uh, you know, our great conference and the great student athletes that are in it. Coach Richardson, I, I completely agree with you. You know, the fans love the, the debate of which conference is the best in the state. And I think, uh, you know, the OAA's state final appearances speak volumes as well as the number of players that go on to play at the next level from our conference. Uh, what I think people don't always realize is the amount of respect that each program has for each other, even though we get after it on Friday nights with each other. Uh, there's a ton of respect that flows both ways. You know, players in the OAA, I hope you understand the quality of men, not only on the field, but off the field that you have as your coaches. I, I can't say enough about the, the coaches in this league. Uh, this year was particularly hard to pick uh, some guys to, to bring today to this event because our senior class may be small in numbers, but uh, it's big in commitment and character. Uh, today we have five seniors who have really lived our motto for the year of reach uh, by reaching in the, the classroom and reaching out to their teammates in our community and, and also reaching further in their training. So I'd like them to introduce themselves. Uh, Stephen Brown, Hart Senior DV, uh, Senior. Dana Babcock, Senior, a whole lot of Nazir Lerdo, Senior running back and linebacker. Trevor Witt, Senior, a whole lot of uh, CJ Witt, uh, halfback, receiver, both safeties. Good job on the, the mic security there. No fumbles, right? I'm extremely proud to stand with these five guys. They've done an outstanding job of, of preparing themselves and, more importantly, helping prepare our team. You know, like everyone, we're excited for the upcoming season. We open with Utica Eisenhower. We uh, finish the regular season at Saline. Uh, crossover games with an extremely physical Birmingham Seahome team, uh, a hardworking and talented North Farmington team, which, you know, the more you watch, it, it really starts to remind you of our old friends from 12 Mile and Middle Belt area. Uh, and not to mention West Bloomfield, defending state champion, Southfield A&T, Stony Creek, Oxford and Clarkston. You know, I'd, I'd say that I'm really happy to hear that the rumors of the OAA joining the SEC are not true. Uh, but when you look at the players in this room and, and across the field, uh, at times it, it feels a lot like the SEC. Offensively, we returned three starters on the offensive line, which we're excited about. We also returned starting quarterback Kyler Carson. Um, we feel we run better at the skill positions than we have in the last few years. And, and defensively, we'll have a lot of new faces, but anchored by two really good players uh, in defensive end Joey Thede and linebacker Ethan Strand. Um, in terms of last year, you know, it was good to get through it. I was really proud of our guys and how they handled everything. Uh, being three and three and, and one and two in the OAA has, has left a bit of a sour taste in our mouth and, and definitely something to prove. So in closing, we'd like to wish everyone a safe and successful season. And uh, it's good to be back. Uh, the Dragons are going to be really interesting this year. I am very concerned about their chemistry. Can this team mesh? That is the big question mark when you look at Lake Orion this year. So I caught up with, Black, with Coach Blackstock about talking about the issues that Lake Orion has going forward. I got Lake Orion Coach John Blackstock here. Of course, I'm Coach. A um, lot of, yeah, a decent year last season, but um, a lot of um, a lot of expectations coming in for you guys this year. Yeah, you know, I think that's, uh, that's pretty true every year. There's always high expectation in Lake Orion because of uh, the support that we have, and, and we enjoy that. Talk about the um, questions I have, of course, chemistry and mesh. Of course, you mentioned that on the Lake Orion preview show. Um, talk about how the chemistry's been going. You know, I think we're off to a good start. We've still got some things to work on in terms of coming together a team and, and really learning to, uh, to value each other and, and play for the guy next to us, because I think that is so important uh, in a team sport like football. How is the secondary issues going on here? 
it's it, a question mark. Yeah, it's a, it's a question. A lot of new faces back there um, with the graduation of some really good players. Um, but we're excited about the young guys and what they've shown so far in the summer and excited to get going on Monday and be able to do it on a much more consistent basis. What is your expectations this year? Expectations, you know, always the same. Um, maximize our, uh, our potential as individuals and as a team. Um, you know, and, and those blue and gold games, the, the two of them are really important to us. Thank you real much, Coach. Absolutely. When you look at the Dragons, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the questions, of course, chemistry match a big concern. Um, obviously, the defensive secondary is another concern that I have with Lake Orion. Um, but when you look at the schedule, it is a very difficult schedule for the Dragons. They open up the year at home against Utica Eisenhower. Um, of course, Utica Eisenhower last in 2019 eliminated Lake Orion from the playoffs. Um, remember that game really, really well. Um, September 3rd, they are at North Farmington at Tom Holland Field. Um, it's going to be a really interesting matchup there. The Raiders have had the, the Raiders and the Dragons, you know, this is the first meeting in a while. So it be really interesting how that, that matchup will play out. Um, curious to see how that, how that game is going to go between Lake Orion and North Farmington. On um, September the 10th, the um, Dragons had to a and to take on the Warriors. Of course, Lake Orion's won two of the last three meetings in it was one of the last two meetings in Southfield. Um, so when you look at the Dragons, they've, they've done pretty well at um, 10 Mile and Losser um, against the Warriors. Um, and then September 17th, the double O trophy game with Oxford is at Lake Orion. Um, of course, um, that'll be a really interesting match. I'm looking forward to the quarterback match between um, Brady Carpenter and um, Kyla Carson. Um, West Bloomfield, um, it'll be really interesting there in that matchup. Um, the Lakers have won the last um, couple meetings with Lake Orion. Um, October the 1st, they take on Stony Creek. Um, rematch of a 2019 playoff um, first round game where Lake Orion won that one. October the 8th, they take on Clarkston. Um, of course, Clarkston beat Lake Orion last season. Um, see home October the 15th. Um, that'll be really interesting at Lake Orion. And then um, the game against Celine on October 22nd at Celine. That's a very daunting matchup there for Lake Orion. Um, key returners for Lake Orion, obviously Kyler Carson, got Nasir Lardell running back. Um, you got Stephen Brown, um, can play anywhere basically at wide receiver corner. Um, of course, Brown transferred in from Grand Blank. Um, very solid line. I mean, Lake Orion's got a lot of strengths with this team coming back. It's just a concern for me, it's their chemistry and their mesh. I mean, like, and also in the secondary as well. So, Big time concerns coming to Flake Orion, but also some optimism. You want to catch the Dragons? Of course, you can catch them on Orion Neighborhood Television. They will cover their home games most of the season as well. So, okay, now we're going to take a um, commercial break here. Um, we're going to talk two more teams in the OANL football preview show, The Red Division. We want to have it at home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Welcome back to the OA Now Football Preview Show, the Red Edition. I am Sammy Terramina here. Let's talk to Wildcats of Oxford. Of course, Oxford is a team that um, last season, of course, um, you know, had some ups and downs. They had a new coach, and um, Zach Lyon take over the program. Of course, Zach Lyon, we know a um, Oxford legend. He played in the NFL with the New Orleans, with the New Orleans Saints and also the Minnesota Vikings. So here is Oxford coach Zach Lyon on his first media day at the podium. I want to thank Coach Byrne for having us out. Um, I think, like everybody else, we're very excited for this upcoming season. Uh, this will be my second season, so um, I'm really looking forward to the game day environment that each one of your schools bring. Last year we're showing up, and it's whatever your, your music that was playing. And I apologize to whoever came to our field and we were playing Baby Shark for a game. I looked up like, what are we doing? So that was one of my, my memories that will never leave my mind from year one. Um, we open up this year with Romeo, um, so 
as the OAA will be able to hopefully grab one week one, bring back for us. And um, our guys this year have uh, have always risen up to the challenge. Last year, obviously in COVID, I gave I tip my hat to everybody in this room. Man, we took the punches, we kept rolling, and now it's on. Right? There's no excuse this year. Let's play football. This year, our parking lots are getting redone. Like um, every single school. So we're over at OES right now, the old Oxford Stadium, and these guys never flinched. They rose up to the challenge. So. They're kind of matching our, our model this year, rise up. Um, doesn't matter what happens, we just keep rolling. Keep rolling with the punches. And um, so I'm gonna let these guys speak for a little bit. Um, first up, we got Mitchell Liviano. Uh, Mitchell Liviano, tight end, the senior. Uh, Brady Carpenter, quarterback, safety, senior. Sal Carroll, running back, linebacker, senior. Jack Keen, receiver, DB. Kevin Green, O line, D line. Wish everybody good health. Um, let's compete this year. I talked to a good friend of mine about Oxford, um, Dan Brown. He's the owner of Chicago Brothers Pizza in Lake Orion. Um, and I, t I mean, like I said, you know, he's very optimistic with Oxford this year. I am too. They did return a very good quarterback in Brady Carpenter. They got a very good solid line. Um, running back game led by Trent Mears so is um, solid as well. Receivers and secondary, a little bit of a question mark. Um, so I caught up with Coach Line um, talking about um, the state of the Wildcats. I got Oxford Coach Zach Line here, of course, some coach, um, playing days in the football. Now you get to now get the interview with me this year. So, um, how is how how's the transition been going for you at Oxford? It's been good. It, it's, it was awesome to have a normal summer this year. Um, you know, just I think it was almost better not being a coach before and coming into a COVID year because you didn't know what to expect. Uh, but now having a normal year, you have plenty of time to work with your athletes. And, um, you know, this team is a special team to work with because they don't ask questions. They just get to work um, and they enjoy it. Talk about that murder's role with schedule. They're not conference. Absolutely brutal. Open up with Romeo. He's got to play Chippewa Valley in there. you got Adams and Rochester. Talk about that schedule. Well, I think you want to play all the good teams, right, in this season. So we'll know where we're at every week. So, um, you know, our, our most important game is the first one, and that's <laughs> – um, that's how it's going to go throughout the season. Our next, our next most important game is the next one, the next one, the next one. So um, we're excited for it. Um, we schedule those games on purpose. What are your expectations this year, Coach? Oh, actually, one more question. Um, how is the um, wide receiving secondary um, concerns? That's been my question for you guys. How has that been? How is that this year? I would say our skill positions are um, have been in, up from normal years. So we're we're very happy with where we're at at um, receiver secondary. Um, so we're good there. What is the expectation this year, Coach? We want to compete for the OA Red. So that's our goal right now is to win the OA. Thank you real much, Coach Line. Absolutely. Yep. There is some question marks when I look at Oxford, especially in that secondary and, and um, wide receiver spot. I know Coach Line is very optimistic with Oxford this year, um, but, when I, but when I talked to my um, good friend, um, Mr. Dan Brown, um, I showed him the schedule, and this was his reaction. Here's the schedule. I mean, Oxford does open up the year at home against Romeo. I mean, that is a brutal, brutal, brutal matchup there. I mean, Romeo last season, of course, um, struggled early on, um, but they uh, made the, um, but they went, they went, they um, went, they went on fire late in the year, of course. Last final game of the regular season, knocked off Wald Lake Northern, and then they knocked off. Um, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay, Macomb, Dakota, and Stony Creek. Um, so for Oxford, you know, this is going to be really interesting, especially with the with last season with them only scoring 10 points the last four um, four weeks. That was really, really tough to swallow. But that'll be really interesting with them going out, taking on a very good Romeo team. Um, September 3rd, they take on Adams. Um, curious to see how um, Coach Lyons defense is going to do against Severe. Um, we don't know where Adams' mindset will be after playing West Bloomfield, so it'll be really interesting for um, how Oxford will respond against Adams. Um, September 10th, they take on West Bloomfield. Um, that is a very difficult matchup for um, Oxford going up against a very talented team in West Bloomfield. Um, that is going to be just, I mean, like, because I know West Bloomfield's had a lot of teams' numbers this season. Um, so it'll be really interesting there. And then September 17th at Lake Orion, that's a double trophy game. Um, that'll be another interesting game. Of course, I mentioned earlier, um, talk about the quarterback match between Brady Carpenter and, um, and um, Kyla Carson. 
Um, be really interesting there. September 24th, it's Clarkston, of course, um, Oxford and Clarkston. They played um, twice last season, of course, with the um, Wolves um, winning both meetings. Um, October the 1st, it's South Bend A&T. So I'm curious to see how this match is going to be between those two teams there. Um, two different styles going against one another. October 8th, they take on Stony Creek. Um, the Cougars are a really, really good team. I mean, they've been a really good program last year. They're a really good team last year. So I'm curious to see how they do this year. October 15th, they take on Rochester. Um, this one, like, another tough matchup for Oxford, of course. Um, seeing where they're at. Both teams very experienced. And then October 22nd, they take on Chippewa Valley. Of course, the Big Reds, um, well coached under Scott Merchant. Um, very difficult match for Oxford Loom, and even that game is at Oxford. Um, so a lot of Wildcat action will be on OCTV, Oxford Community Television. So if you want to watch Wildcats in action, tune into OCTV, Oxford Community Television. Um, but speaking of that team that was not at Media Day, and that was the Southwood A&T Warriors, of course. With A&T this year, I mean, like, they got a new coach. Um, Aaron Marshall takes over for Tim Conley. Um, they got a very good quarterback and Isaiah Marshall coming back. They got some very good receivers as well. Um, so they were not at media day. But um, when you look at the Warriors, I do got some questions up front with them. Um, and then when you look at that, uh, when you look at A&T, of course, last season, much better year for them, though, of course, even though they lost in the first round to Sterling Heights-Stevenson in the um, semifinals to Sterling Heights-Stevenson. Um, so when you look at the Warriors this year, I mean, like, new change, new culture, New everything, but there's still some concerns. Program strength is a big-time concern when I look at the Warriors. And then also the um, there's some questions who's going to be the running back, who's going to be the, um, you know, to go with Isaiah Marshall's um, run-pass option offense. So let's look at that schedule, obviously, of course. Um, it is brutal. I mean, A&T does open up with Detroit Cast Tech. Um, that is a really difficult match. It's the first meeting between these two teams. Um, but... But um, Marshall's no stranger to Detroit Cast Tech with his days at um, Southfield High. Um, so it'll be really interesting how that will look on August 27th at Wayne State. Um, basically, it's the court, it's a, it's like a, um, it's basically like a um, player showcase when you look at that game between Detroit Cast Tech and Southfield A&T. September 3rd, it's Groves, of course, for A&T. It's going to be a really interesting matchup. Um, See how that game's going to turn out there. Um, September 10th, Lake Orion. I mean, I think this is going to be a really interesting game. Um, clash of different styles. Of course, some Lake Orion's won the last two meetings at Southfield. Um, they didn't play last year because of a ts COVID-19 issues. Uh, so it'll be very interesting between these two teams there. Um, September 17th, a ts had a nice little rivalry with Clarkston. Um, except the Wolves have won two of the last three against the, um, against the Wolves. So... It'd be really interesting. I mean, like, you know, a, a T's lost the last two of the three against the Wolves, so it'd be really interesting how that one turns out there. And then September 24th, it's Stony Creek, obviously, when you look at the Cougars. Um, you know, Stony Creek went into Southfield and tore them to shreds a year ago. Um, so Stony Creek's going to be very young this year. So going against a very experienced a and team. Um, October 1st, it's Oxford. I mean, like, this was an interesting one, obviously, with... Um, it's a clash of two different styles, obviously, so I'm curious to see which style we went out here. Um, October the 8th for a and it's the big one with West Bloomfield. Um, it'll be a good test for Coach um, for, um, for Coach Aaron Marshall going up against a really good sec, and it's, and it's a nephew, Isaiah Marshall, going up against a very good secondary um, of West Bloomfield. They should be experienced by this point. Um, Oak Park on October the 15th, it's been a rivalry game in the past, so I'll be very curious to see how that matchup is going to go. And they call it the October 22nd River Rouge, of course. Um, River Rouge has had Southfield's number in the past. Um, we know River Rouge in 2019 knocked off Southfield Arts and Tech, um, took them out of the playoffs. Um, so Rouge has won the last two games against the Warriors. So it'll be very interesting to see how a and handles this season. Of course, a um, lot of questions with a and Obviously, they got Isaiah Marshall quarterback. Um, running game's a big question mark. Um, Line's a big question mark for A&T. Just a lot of questions for in that area. But anytime you have the quarterback back, that is a real huge position of importance, of course. That is a huge, huge position of importance is the quarterback spot. So a lot of expectations for A&T coming in the season. 
um, see if they can keep the uh, momentum going with the new coach, a new system, and we'll see what happens with A&T going forward. Okay, now we're going to take a break here. Um, we're going to talk two more, the final two teams of the Red Division here on the Special OA Now Football Preview Show, the Red Edition. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to Special OA Now Football Preview Show, the Red Edition here. I'm Sammy Taramina here. Of course, um, we got the final two teams um, of the um, OA Red. Um, we got First, we got the Cougars of Stony Creek. This is a team that is going back up to the Red, of course. Um, last season, we knew about the special year that they had. Stony Creek had a ton of special moments, of course. I'm getting into the playoffs, going undefeated for the first time in school history. Um, they did lose a very good player in Cameron Burford, lost Ryan Eckhout, along with several others. Um, now, Coach Nick Merlo was on vacation, so he sent his younger brother. So he sent his younger brother to media day. So here he is at the podium. All right, I want to thank uh, Rochester again for letting us be here. Um, great uh, opportunity to start the season. I am Coach Merlo, but I'm not the Coach Merlo. Um, I'm actually Tony Merlo. I'm just younger brother, offensive coordinator at Stony Creek. Um, excited for the challenge that we get to have this year. Uh, excited to be doing our summer, uh, normal summer this year, and uh, it's exciting, ready to go. So I'll give it over to our guys. Uh, Eric Booth, senior and wide receiver safety. Uh, Luke McKay, linebacker, senior. Jason Igwe, wide receiver, tight end, senior. Jacob Bass, senior quarterback. Zach Hager, senior running back safety. Steven Lambert, senior wide receiver cornerback. Thanks again. Good luck to all the teams that stay home. Stony Creek's going to have some questions this year. Quarterback is a big question mark. Of course, we saw one of the quarterbacks at Media Day in Jacob Bass, but. Um, there is another quarterback who played JV last year who was really good. Um, he's getting a lot of um, a lot of love, a lot of hype, obviously, for Stony Creek. Um, so they could have a quarterback competition. When you look at Stony Creek, obviously, running back, of course, um, is a big question mark. R wide receiver is a big question mark. And also, we know Coach Gary Griffin's defense has been a big question mark for Stony Creek. So when you look at the Cougars, you know, I tried to go more in-depth with Stony Creek. Um, so here is my interview with Coach um, Tony Merlo. I got the offensive coordinator here at Stony Creek, of course, um, Mr. Merlo, of course, the um, older Merlo is on vacation, so I get the younger one this time. So I'll talk about last season, obviously, had a great year, obviously, so so when you look at, of course, replacing a new quarterback, I mean, that's going to be really interesting for you guys. Yeah, I mean, we had a great year last year. Um, you know, our goal this year is just continue to uh, make strides in our armor up culture, uh, keep coming to work every single day, uh, you know, replacing our quarterback. Ryan Eckhout was a great quarterback for us last year. Um, we got uh, two really good young men that we're looking at, you know, have had great summers, have done everything we've asked them to do, and we're just looking forward to getting the pads on and, and continue just to improve every day. And, guy who gives us the best chance to win along with a lot of those things that we do offensively and defensively is uh, how we're going to be successful. Talk about your off your lines of course that's a little bit of a concern you lost a lot of experience last year up front I mean so talk about that line situation. Yeah I mean, we were really blessed last year uh, offensive defensive line to have nine different uh, seniors who started for us um, this year we're like you said we're a little bit young um, but again you know in our armor up culture we're just working hard every single day, trying to be elite in every rep that we do. Uh, we're making great strides. Uh, the kids, um, you know, are, are really being really great, being coachable. 
put in the work in the weight room, put in the work uh, on the field this summer, and uh, just getting prepared to play uh, OAA Red football. What are the expectations for your coach? Uh, expectations to get better every single day, uh, continue to grow the under, you know, the, the armor up culture, um, and just you know come out every single day with an elite attitude, ready to work. Armor up. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. The yeah, Armour culture will certainly be tested going up to the red. Of course, the um, red is a much tougher division than the white. Um, so when you look at, but Stony Creek is no stranger to the red. Of course, their um, sub varsity programs have played against red division teams. So I think Stony Creek will fit just fine in this division. When you look at the schedule and you kind of look at it and say, okay, you know, it's pretty, it's a good schedule. I mean, like they open up here at home against Port Huron. Port Huron's a team that is very quick, very athletic as well. Um, this will be a really interesting game for um, Stony Creek. I mean, like a young team taking on a Big Red school, a Big Reds team that is um, pretty good. I mean, like Port Huron's not a bad team, so it'll be, certainly be a challenge for Stony Creek um, taking on a very good Port Huron team. Now, if the, good, the good thing for Stony Creek is that game's at Stony Creek. If it was at Memorial Stadium up in Port Huron, I could just imagine the Howling Winds of Lake Huron coming in there. So, but it'd be really interesting. It's a good match for Stony Creek taking on Port Huron. Um, September 3rd, that one's a really interesting game, of course, with Rochester. Obviously, um, Nick Merlo um, used to be the um, coach at Rochester. I mean, used to be the um, assistant at Rochester. His dad used to be the um, head coach at Rochester. So that would be a really interesting game, of course, um, Coach Merlo's return trip to Rochester. That would be really interesting there. Um, September 10th, if Stony Creek wants to prove that last season, I mean, like, it wants to prove who they are, they take on a very good Clarkson team. I mean, like, Clarkson's going to be a real test for Stony Creek. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how that match was, especially up in the trenches. Um, so I'm curious to see how that match is going to go. And then um, Stony Creek on September 17th got to go to West Bluefield. That is not an easy matchup for them at all. I mean, like, this is going to be a really interesting game there. September 24th, Southfield at home. Um, we know what Stony Creek did last year to Southfield A&T. Basically embarrassed them on their home field. Uh, so that'll be a really, really interesting matchup to see how that matchup will go within that matchup there. Um, October 1st at Lake Orion. Um, this will be really interesting there. Um, curious to see how these two teams match up. They played last played in 2019 with um, Lake Orion winning that game. It was a really, really competitive game. Um, Stony Creek did a really good job um, slowing Lake Orion's offense down by playing time possession football in that in the playoffs that year. October 8th against Oxford, of course, um, Stony Creek. We know what they did against them two years ago, obviously, of course, when they went in there and just Steamrolled the Wildcats. Um, so I'm curious to see how that matchup is right there. Going to be over there at, um, again with those two teams. Um, October 15th, they take on Adams. Last season at Adams, Stony Creek just laid a clinic on Adams. And I know a lot of people at Highlander Nation is motivated for that game. And then October 22nd, Stony Creek closes out the year with Seaholm. I mean, this is a really unique matchup there for Stony Creek. So when I look at the Cougars, um, they got some concerns. Um, there's some question marks. Who's going to be the starting quarterback for week one against Port Huron? Um, you know, this is going to be a much different Stony Creek team than years past. Of course, you got John Fogler at, court, at running back. That's going to be really interesting to see how he does as a full-fledged starter. Um, curious to see who starts week one. Is it Ethan Benitez or Jacob Best? That is the big, big question mark for Stony Creek going forward is they got to get that quarterback situation settled. And I know Coach Merlo, I know the Armor Up culture. I know they do a lot of they do a lot of podcasts, elite man of character. Um, the Reds going to be really challenging this year for Stony Creek, I think, when I look at the Cougars going forward. And then the last team we have is the defending Division I state champion, West Bluefield Lakers. Of course, the Lakers last season, of course, went all the way, knocked off Belleville last year in Division I um, state semifinals. Um, they Conquered a lot of demons. They lost a lot, though. Of course, they have a new coach. They had they lost a very good running back in Donovan Edwards. I mean, they have a new coach in Tyrese Grice, um, who takes over for Coach Bellamy, who is now in Ann Arbor. So here is Coach Grice at the podium. How's everybody doing? Great, great. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you about myself, Coach Grice. I've been in West Bowl for about nine years. 
defense coordinator for nine years. This is my tenth year, and I'm a new head coach and, uh, at, at West Bloomfield. I'm excited about the challenge and the opportunity. Uh, yeah, as you know, uh, everybody knows we won the state championship representing the OAA grant. And I always say, uh, this league prepared you for championships. And I'd like to thank Clarkston for beating us last year and getting us ready. Uh, all these teams in OA and Red did a great job preparing us. We played Belleville in the semifinals. Uh, uh, we always tell them, you know, you guys don't play nobody in your league. And they've been a, 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 a thorn in our side for the last four, three years. We finally got them. Uh, but we really did it with this league. And we're proud to be part of this league. And we thank the organizations and the teams that get prepared. And we'd like to do the same thing for you guys in the next level. Now, uh, we were, last year we, uh, by the way, I told my rotator cup. For two years ago, actually, but the last two years I've just been taking cortisone shots, and, and last year because of COVID, I couldn't get any surgery. For now, I had about three weeks ago. But we had a great staff um, all right, that, in, that represent our organization. But look, this year we 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 have a young team this year. Uh, we lost. We had 39 seniors that went on, uh, but we got a good program. We have about 72 players on our roster this year. Uh, so we we prepared and ready to go and to uh, take on our uh, repeat as state champs, and that's our goal. That's our goal right now. But we have three young men here, who's tremendous young men who who are uh, who are leaders in this program and leading this program, and they believe in the program, and more importantly, they believe in me as the head coach, and I'm proud of that. All right, I like to talk. Give you guys uh, the the mic. Uh, so my Uh, DJ Raymond, strong safety, free safety, senior. Uh, Malik Mathieu, um, running back, senior. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm uh, looking forward to the challenge to play you all again this year. And uh, you have a great season, and good luck, and stay healthy. When I look at West Bloomfield this year, of course, a lot of people look at, obviously, who's going to replace Dom and Edwards. It's possible it could be Dylan Tatum. I mean, Tatum's been getting a lot of looks as well. Samaj Morgan, who was at Media Day, um, is another other other star players as well. Um, they got a very young quarterback who was really really good last year in the JV ranks. Who saw some time at varsity and Raquan Nance. Um, Lineman pretty good. Brandon Davis Swan, I mean Herring, um, among others. Uh, Michael Williams at linebacker. Um, defensive secondary big kind of question mark when I look at West Bloomfield. So they got a lot of lot of very good pieces over there at West Bloomfield. So. I talked to Coach Grice about um, the state of the Lakers, especially after overcoming Belleville, winning a Division I state championship, and expectations to possibly repeat. Can I get an interview with you? I got West Bloomfield coach, um, coach, um, coach Grice here. I'm coach, um, of course, I had Zach Hilbers, I've had Coach Bellamy. Mm -hmm. Now, um, talk about last season, everything, the, the special year you guys had, of course, the game against Belleville, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, talk about last season and everything heading into this year. Well, last season, of course, was a challenge, uh, the up and down with the COVID. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that was an mo emotional roller coaster ride for the whole program and the coaches and parents. Uh, once we got over that hump, and each week we, we was hoping we played week to week. So it was a week to week thing last year. But uh, game, you know, Belleville, for example, been a, been a thorn in our side. We know, know once we get into the playoff, the, uh, that's one of the teams we got to get past. So the last three years, they beat us the two years, and last year we finally got over the hump. And I think there were some things we learned for those two years, and that was reduce our penalties. So that's one thing we focused on last year is cut down our penalties because once we got in the playoff and played these big games, we had a lot of penalties that hurt us and cost us the game. So we're looking forward to uh, uh, another challenge this year. Me as the head coach, uh, Belgium did a tremendous job uh, the last t 10 years he's been here. I've been here nine years right by his side. So we're just going to pick on what we left off with the same staff. Um, make some modifications, some changes of what we do, how we do things so we can improve our game. But we got a young team this year, uh, particularly on, especially on the defensive side of the mm -hmm. ball. Uh, offensively returning seven starters, defensively, defensively returning uh, four starters. Our strength's going to be in our secondary. Mm -hmm. um, our front seven, we got to replace six out of seven guys. 
So that's going to be the biggest challenge and just trying to find those games. But at the same time, it's opportunity for our players because it's going to be their first time ever uh, opportunity to start. So we're looking forward to that. Talk about Raekwon. Um, you're you're um, likely your starting quarterback. He did play some a little bit last year in the state at West Blue. I mean, in the state title game. So talk about Raekwon Nance a little bit. Oh, Rick Nance, I love that kid. He's a tremendous uh, athlete, tremendous attitude team player. He's one of those guys that's going to, he liked the challenge. He, he, he tells me all the time, coach, I, I want the, the uh, arrow pointed on my back because that's when he plays the best and when he's under pressure. And uh, he always say, coach, I'm the next Kyle Murray. And if you see his game, you're going to understand why he's saying that. What is your expectations this year, coach? Our expectations defend our state championship. Mm -hmm. uh, anything less than that is, is unsatisfactory for our program. Uh, if you look at our program the last four or five years, we had the talent to go state championship all those four years. But again, other teams has talent too. So uh, it's about cultivating that talent, developing that talent, and over time, by the time we get in the playoff, we rock and roll. And so it's going to be it's going to be exciting to see, and I'm looking forward to that challenge. Thank you real much, Coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Sorry, get better. When you look at West Bloomfield, of course, there is a lot of expectation that you got some talent coming back. I think they can replace that. They um, they can address those issues at um, up front. I think that'll be really interesting as well. Um, when you look at the schedule for West Bloomfield, um, they open up the year at Rochester Adams. Um, that'll be a really interesting game in the swamp. Um, the first game, um, you know, when you look at Adams, of course, they run the veer. They run that triple option offense. Um, you know, it'll be really interesting to see. Um, and West Bloomfield, of course, we know they're very athletic. Um, so it'll be really interesting in that matchup there. Um, September 3rd, they take on Oak Park. I mean, this one's a, um, another interesting match. Oak Park, li li they lost a lot of guys from a year ago. Um, so th but there's going to be a lot of athleticism on that field on September the 3rd in that game. Um, September 10th, they take on Oxford. Of course, it's another interesting game there. Um, curious to see how um, it's a clash of two different styles in the RPO and the pro-style offense Oxford runs. So I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be on that one. Um, September 17th, they take on Stony Creek, which is a really interesting game, to say the least. I mean, that'll be really interesting, of course. Um, a lot of people look forward to that game um, last year, but um, Romeo upset Stony Creek, and we never got to see that game materialize um, between those two teams. So they're going to make up for it on September the 17th. Um, September 24th at Lake Orion. The last time they met at Lake Orion, of course, that was a classic um that was a classic four overtime game. Um, and then, of course, last season, even though the score didn't indicate it, but Lake Orion in West Bloomfield was seven up in the fourth quarter. Um, so that what the, so West Bloomfield and Lake Orion's had some really good battles. So that'd be really interesting there between the Lakers and the Dragons. Even the Lakers have, have won the last um, couple games against Lake Orion. October 1st, it's Clarkston. Um, it's the rematch in the Swamp. Um, of course, West Bloomfield lost to Clarkston 24-21 in overtime last season. Um, that was their only loss of the year. Um, so curious to see how that game will be in the, when that happens in the Swamp. October the 8th, it's South Bay and t for West Bloomfield. Of course, we know that rivalry. Um, October 15th, they take on North Farmington in the Swamp, and that's a really interesting game there. Coach Metzing, Coach Grice, and I'm Coach Herstein. Um, that is going to be really, really interesting. And then October 22nd, they close out the year at Swinart going against Utica Eisenhower. Of course, um, another interesting match, of course, West Bloomfield took on Sterling Heights Stevenson in the district final and just blew them out. And they knocked off Romeo as well. So West Bloomfield, no stranger playing against the Mac Red. Of course, they beaten the, they beat the Mac um, Red. Um, they beat Stevenson. They beat Romeo last season, the two two of the top teams in that division. Now they take, take on Utica Eisenhower um, going forward there. So here's my projections for the OA Red this season. Of course, when you look at the Red, um, you can't go wrong with West Bloomfield, especially what they got back. I'm um, Dylan Tatum. You got um, Samaj Morgan, Raekwon Nance, you know. Until, I used to term Ric Flair. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. And West Bloomfield right now is the man. Defending Richmond State Champions, got a lot coming back. I mean, just a lot of experience coming back. Um, Clarkson, I got them at 7-2. and two. Um, Of course, um, I really like where the Wolves are at. I just think that, um, you know, when you look at their game, their um, schedule, it's really da it's a daunting task. I mean, they could be an 8-1 team, but they could also be a 7-2 team. But at worst, they could be a 6-3 team. So 
when you look at Clarkston, I mean, like, I think I think seven and two looks pretty good right now for them. I mean, especially with the experience they got back with Mike DePillo, um, Ethan Clark, Davis York, um, and then the line play at Cole Dillinger. Um, Lake Orion's an interesting one because when I look at the Dragons, I said they're as, they're as good as six, but as bad as two. If the chemistry and mesh comes together, they could win more than six games. I mean, but that schedule, very daunting, very challenging task going forward. Um, so just questions surrounding Lake Orion. a and I had them at four and five. They got a lot of experience. I'm a little concerned about the running game and their line play. Um, the schedule is very daunting as well. So, you know, that's the reason why I have them there. Oxford, you know, this is what I talked to Dan Brown um, about Oxford. They're as, I mean, like they can be as good as six wins, obviously, especially with the schedule they play. But when I look at that schedule, it's just, it's brutal. For me, when I, when I read the blog on them, Read the blog. I'm gonna release um, coming up. If we, um, I, for me, when I say about Oxford, it's not the talent that's gonna be the issue. It's that schedule. It is a vicious, vicious schedule. And Stony Creek, of course, um, going up from the white to the red. Young team, gonna have some challenges. Um, I just don't know if I see Stony Creek um, really hanging in the um, red with the young team they had. Now, if it was last year's team, they definitely would be hanging in the red. But um, but I just don't know if I see it with this group this year. They got a lot to prove when I look at Stony Creek. Now, when you look at the rankings, of course, some of these will not be the rankings um, next next week. Of course, we will be in the week two already, but the preseason rankings have all 16th ranked. West Bloomfield, obviously the number one ranked team um, with the experience they got back. Um, Clarkson ahead there at number three. a t at number four. Um, Oxford at number six. A lot of people are gonna say, well, what about Lake Orion? I mean, like, you know, Lake Orion had the ranked higher. I mean, like Oxford, they got a lot of experience coming back. Um, I know they got some questions, but I just think Oxford, if they can, like, um, they got a lot to prove. And Lake Orion, the same thing. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Dragons, um, the, the Dragons more of a chemistry thing. If they can address, if they can group, get together, you know what I mean, like form a bond, form a pack, you know what I mean. Then I think Lake Orion can be a really, really good team this year. And then Stony Creek, of course, wrapping up at number eight. Of course, um, last year's success. So I'm curious to see how this year's success is going to be for the Cougars. I mean, like, I'm curious to see where they're going to be at. Um, so, you know, when you look at the rankings this year, obviously, um, there's a lot to like. You know, when you look at the OA Red, um, a lot of expectations this year. A lot of, um, you know, a lot of expectations. Is This is probably one of the toughest leagues in the state of Michigan. So I wish everybody the best of luck in the OA Red this year. Um, as I said in the blue and the white, you know, I wish everybody the best of luck. And um, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, of course, don't be surprised if, if, if a lot of these teams have deep playoff runs. We could have another state champion again from the OA Red. So... I look forward to watching the 2020 se 2021 season with you. Um, wish everybody the best of luck. And take care, everybody. And God bless everybody. And good luck to the entire OA Nation.